Hey everybody, Koldar here. Today we are looking at the Will of the Emperor encounter in Mogoshan Vaults on normal difficulty. So, uh, before we get into the strategy of this fight, I should just mention briefly that while this is the last encounter of this zone, unfortunately it doesn't really feel like it's a last encounter. It's not that difficult. And unfortunately, there isn't a lot of strategy involved. There aren't very many interesting mechanics. Uh, yeah, so you'll find, I think, that getting this fight down will be much simpler than even some of the previous earlier fights, such as Elagon or even Feng the Accursed. Uh, because really this fight is just like any normal WoW fight for most of your raid excluding your tanks and arguably some of your melee DPS, depending on how much you have. They're the only ones that really have a new mechanic to deal with. So, uh, that's all right. You know, it is what it is. Enough uh, moaning and bitching from me. Let's go ahead and get on to the encounter itself and how we go about taking it down. So, the actual strategy for this fight is really quite simple. Uh, as I mentioned, for most of your raid, your healers, most of your DPS, you'll basically just be killing these adds throughout the entire fight. So for the first 90 seconds or so, you simply uh, fight against the three add types that will appear throughout the fight. And this sort of gets you used to what is going to happen. After 90 seconds, the main bosses will spawn from the two windows, kind of in the southeast and southwest there. You can see the bosses there. And these are the Emperor's closed fist and open hand, or just Emperor's hands. Um, so you have Chin Shi and Jan Shi, and they should both be picked up by a tank and moved to your tanking locations, wherever you decide that is. For us, you can see we have these uh, markers, blue and green, near the entrance stairs for our tanks. And the reason we chose these locations is that it keeps the bosses cleave attacks safely away from the raid in the rest of the room so that the rest of the room is open for for free movement and all that now you can opt to tank somewhere near one of the spawn locations on the windows uh, many people like to tank right near the red marker you can see there on the right and there's an opposite one on the other side uh, there it is the purple one uh, so that the tanks can also do damage to the courage spawns when they appear. But uh, we didn't find that was necessary. And uh, just more hassle for the tanks to worry about. So, yeah, it's up to you. At any rate, the add priority is really the key to this fight for most of your raid. And it's quite simple. So the first add type you'll get is the Emperor's Rage. You can see one right there in the screen. And these will always spawn in a pair fairly frequently. They also always spawn in the windows directly to the south or the back of the room. When they appear, they will immediately fixate on a random player in the raid. And this just causes them to walk toward that player and try to melee them constantly. Uh, if you want, you can CC the rages with pretty much any CC. So... You can stun them and root them and snare them and knock them down and all that good stuff. However, uh, their damage output when attacking a player is not really that high. And we found that if you consider a CC to be a global cooldown at best that you're using on that ability, this is a global cooldown that could have eventually been used on doing damage instead. And in the case of these rages, at least, it seems better spent on doing that damage to them to kill them sooner rather than to CC them. Now, that's not always true, of course. Uh, you know, you can drop some snares or, like, put a hunter trap down or something, and that's probably worth it. It'll probably save you quite a bit of damage and save you more global cooldowns for healers than your DPS would have wasted on the CC. But generally speaking... These do not do a lot of damage. So you can see one hitting me there. And it's 20,000 to 40,000 a hit, basically. Um, so pretty minor damage. I mean, essentially, I could turn and stun it uh, if I wasn't hand of protection and therefore had to worry about it. 
and it would probably be dead in the five or six seconds of the stun. So pretty minor uh, at any rate. The next add type is the strength. And these spawn in singular uh, patterns. So one is to the bottom right or the southeast and one is to the southwest. And it can spawn randomly in either side when it appears. The strength is essentially a normal mob in that it has normal threat. However, it does not to be, need to be tanked by a normal tank in the same sense that the bosses do. They don't have white hits to speak of, uh, so they don't melee normally. Instead, a strength will attack fairly frequently at the location of their current threat player with a energizing smash ability, which just slams the ground and does physical damage, about 150,000, in a circle indicated very clearly on the ground where they're smashing. So if a player gets hit by that, they take the damage, and they're also stunned for a couple seconds. So it tends to be that if you get hit by one, then it makes it that much more difficult to avoid the next one, and so on. That's not always true, but, you know, general rule. The other mechanic is that every time Energizing Smash lands, whether it hits someone or not, the radius of the circle, or the effect, is increased by a yard. So... Even though you can avoid the slams and just by moving around from them, eventually the uh, radius of the effect will become so large that it starts to hit other people that are not directly tanking them. And this can be a problem. So you need to make sure you kill them before that gets dangerous. But as I said, they don't need to be tanked by an actual tank because all their attacks are that uh, circle on the ground and you can avoid them. So generally speaking, you'll want to have a melee DPS handle the strengths. In our case, we have our DPS warrior uh, handle them. So every time a strength is spawning, he runs out in the room, finds where it's coming from, gets aggro really quick, and then he just DPSs it kind of off uh, to the side somewhere a little bit so that the AE circle effect is not in range of hitting anyone, anyone else. And he can probably solo it before the next one spawns, although some people eventually do dam damage it, uh, it seems. So the final add type is the Emperor's Courage. And there's one spawning in the top right of the screen. You can kind of see the window glowing there a little bit. So these always spawn from the left or the right, which is basically directly east or directly west. And that's kind of where we put the red and uh, blue, or I think not blue, purple marker, sorry. So when a Courage spawns, it will immediately fixate, much like the Rage, but a Courage will fixate on the tank that is furthest from their spawn location at the time. So in our case, uh, the one that spawned to my right or to the east aggroed on the tank that's to my left at the blue marker area. When the Courage spawns, a couple seconds later, it will also cast a Shield Barrier in front of itself, and when this barrier is active, any attacks in the front 180 degree arc of the mob are deflected, they don't land. So to do any damage or to apply any debuffs to it, you need to be in the back uh, side of the mob uh, when it has its shield active. Now there is a small grace period um, while it's spawning before its shield is actually activated, where you can get a few attacks from the front but you have to be really quick to react to that. The goal on the Courage is to simply get it snared very quickly. You can't really stun it, but you can snare it, and you should do so, because if it reaches melee range of the tank it is fixating on, uh, you will basically cause the tank to be snared when the Courage attacks, and snares on the tank mean that they're getting hit by the boss attacks, uh, which you want to avoid, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So, those are the three ad types, and what it all means is that you have to set a simple priority for your DPS to handle these ads in order of importance, and when they are not attacking any ads, then they can do damage to the bosses themselves. So, the best priority seemed to be for us the Courage first, because, again, if these reach the tank, they will snare the tank, and that's really bad. 
So DPS always attack the courage first, and a good idea is to have someone watch the window locations where they can spawn when they're due. And if you angle your camera up, you can see, like there's one at the top of the screen there. So it's coming from the purple spawn. And so I'm pretty much in range to attack it right away and there get a snare on it. So yeah, you want to watch for where the couragers are coming from and announce to the raid so that they can quickly get DPS on it and kill it down. Uh, you want to make sure you also get a snare very quickly. Otherwise it could get quite far across the room before you actually get a chance to attack it. Uh, so next up is the rages. These are second priority. So if there's no courage to attack, then you should attack rages. Uh, as I said, the damage from these is not that severe, but they're ahead of the strength in priority because unlike the strength, unless you chain CC the rage mobs, they do actually do damage. You can't avoid their hits if they're meleeing you. Whereas the strength, you can avoid all its damage if you do it properly. So we kill the rages second, and then finally the strength. Uh, as I mentioned, we have our melee warrior DPS on the strength full time until it's dead. And then he usually goes back to attacking one of the bosses until the next strength is due. So again, if you have a melee DPS, put them on the strength and they can almost solo them depending on their DPS. Um, but basically when your other DPS don't have anything else to do, that is there are no courage or rages to attack, they can attack the strength to help out that melee player. A ranged player can tank the strength if they want, but it's ill-advised since usually they can't do nearly full DPS while moving, whereas a melee pretty much can. So if there are no adds to speak of to attack, then you can attack the bosses. So you, the bosses share their health pool, so it doesn't matter which one you attack. Um, and the main mechanic for this fight, and really the only thing that will take much practice for anybody, is all from the bosses. And it's the new mechanic that you haven't pr probably seen before, which is this combo attack system. So they're going through a combo right now. And fairly frequently, uh, both bosses will start this chain of five attacks in a combo. These are basically a series of 180 degree arc cleave attacks in random directions around the bosses and possibly a 360 degree stomp attack as well that uh, is a pretty short range. So all of these attacks are avoidable and the goal here is for your tanks especially and any melee DPS that may be attacking them at the time to avoid getting hit by all five attacks in the combo in a row. If they avoid all five in a row, they get a new action button ability called Opportunistic Strike. And this does 500,000 damage, uh, physical damage, when you use it. Now you only have this ability for a few seconds after you gain it from dodging a combo. So you need to make sure you use it right away because otherwise it'll just disappear and you'll, you won't get your extra damage. So that said, it's it's pretty much the key to this fight, as I mentioned, because if you do not avoid these attacks, especially as a tank, you'll get a stacking debuff that reduces your armor by 10% per stack and it lasts 30 seconds. So this is applied from all the cleave attacks that they can do. The stomp doesn't do the armor debuff, but it stuns. And the stun is long enough that if a cleave attack is following up in the direction that the player is, they will get hit um, because the stun will be persisting through that next cleave. So if your tanks are not good at, at dodging these, they're going to have many stacks of the 10% armor debuff and take a lot of damage. And that will really drain your healer mana quite quickly. So that's the only real danger in this fight is the damage on the tanks can get quite high if they are not able to avoid the combo attacks frequently. Um, otherwise, the basic goal here is to watch the pattern that Janshi and Chinshi will use and get into a system that you can repeat over and over and over and pretty much flawlessly avoid the combos. 
So uh, I don't really do it in this video because I actually have to heal stuff, but in LFR, for example, um, I have a lot of fun just meleeing and trying to get my combos going uh, as if I was an actual melee DPS, even though I'm healing the fight. And it's good practice, even for your tanks on this, if they don't want to uh, waste the raid's time as much learning this, you can practice an LFR and it's basically the same. It's just not as severe a consequence if you fail. So anyway, the best technique I found to dodge it is to zoom your camera way out and then angle it so it's above you looking straight down on your character and the boss. And then you just keep your character really close to melee range of the boss at all times. So the goal here is that no matter where the swing is, um, you are close enough to the center of the boss that you can move through them within the few seconds before the next swing that may hit your current location. It also means that when the stomp occurs, it's a small enough radius that you can back out by sidestepping and get out of range of it in time. So learning with a pattern is, well, it's, I shouldn't say pattern, it's random. But learning how to dodge it is really all about looking at the animation indicated by the Emperor's hands. So you can see when you when they're combo swinging, they have sort of a blue slice animation that goes a couple times through the air. And this indicates the side of the boss in which they're about to do a swinging arc attack. So again, if you're looking down on them with your camera from above and you see the, the swinging arc you know, to the north, for example, you know that the next swing is about to happen to the north. And so you need to immediately move through the boss, or if you need to, to get to the south side. And then be on the lookout for the next animation indication. And again, move through them if you need to, or back out if it's a stomp animation. And this process just repeats over and over and over. So, um, you know, some people are obviously better at, uh, than, at it than others. And if you can swap tanks because you're having trouble with it, you know, I recommend you do that because you could spend a lot of time on this mechanic. But if done properly by your tanks, they should be probably the highest DPS in the encounter. Okay, so the last ability, which is being used right now actually, is Titan Gas. And this is cast fairly infrequently, uh, but it's basically a gas that fills up the entire room and it increases the damage that uh, is dealt in melee attacks by 25% for both players and the enemy. It also does damage over time every one second to everyone in the raid. So it's a good time to use your little cooldowns and whatnot. Um, but the most important thing is that your tanks are going to take a lot more damage. So they should use their cooldowns to avoid uh, hits that are happening during the Titan Gas especially. And then once it ends, they can just go back to the normal thing. I should also mention that the combos are on a very set timer when they occur. And while a combo is occurring, the mobs do not use normal melee attacks. So if your tanks have short duration cooldowns, which pretty much all tanks do now, and you can use them frequently, the idea here is to build up your um, activatable mitigation during the combo but not use any of it and then when the combo ends and actual melee hits occur again then you can use your mitigation abilities that you've been banking um, up to that point so that'll help your tanks a little bit with the incoming damage that occurs between combo series anyway so yeah it's kind of a weird fight not all that exciting unfortunately uh, but that's the best advice I can give for Will of the Emperor. So good luck and thanks for watching.